What's good, everybody? It's man, Big Dom, coming live at you with True Players Podcast episode. Actually doing a, a live broadcast right now at 11, 11, 11 p.m. Got my dread, my guest host, Joey G, Ricky Brown. We're going to talk, we're gonna talk about the uh, six-year-old girl that got arrested in Orlando back in September of 2019. Um, this video just um, surfaced about a few days ago. And when I saw that video, it was kind of appalling to, see what, appalling to see what I saw. A police officer arrested a six-year-old girl, putting zip ties on her, and no one seemed to step into, in, in defense of the, of the little girl. Uh, my, question is, my question is, where was the parents? Was the parents called before that happened? Was the parents called before the incident happened in which the girl accordingly got arrested for kicking the teacher? Where was communication from the, educa- from the educators in that building? From what I've seen from that footage, it seemed like she was um, under control, subdued, and, in, and and being cooperative with the school staff. So I, I didn't understand why the police was called. I don't I don't want to say why the police actually uh, went to the extremes of putting the zip ties on this young girl and traumatizing her mentally. Um, what do you guys think about the situation? Uh, I, I think you put it best. The whole entire situation is appalling. The fact that they have some type of system in place for arresting children is is appalling in itself. Now, I understand that these SROs, these school resource officers, are there for a reason. Um, But it's always been my understanding that they're they're there for the protection of the children in case some some type of Sandy Hook situation or some type of Columbine situation were, were, were to go down. You have armed police officers on site that that are capable of at least, uh, you know, if they can't subdue the situation, they can at least call in backup to have the situation subdued in a timely manner. Um, At the same time, uh, the the, the arresting officer, not the one that put the zip ties on on the girl, that was actually the transport officer, Um, but the, the, the arresting officer was the one that was wearing the body camera. He ended up getting fired, um, and the the reason behind him him getting fired was because he did not follow protocol. He was supposed to get some type of authorization from his commanding officer in order to make an arrest of someone under the age of 12. Why is there even a system in place to arrest somebody under the age of 12? You know, that, 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 that child was supposedly assaulting school staff. That child needs an ass with him, not, not a night in jail. That, right. that, that, that child does not need to get booked. That child does not need a mugshot. That child does not need that traumatizing experience. I don't care if they, if they did erase that from that little girl's record. She has to go to night. She has to go to sleep every night and think about that. She's going to, like, how, how long is she going to be traumatized from that event? Right. You have you you have people like uh, D. L. Hughley, who had experiences with police officers at a young age, that is still traumatizing to them to this day. So to go through that as a six-year-old child, um, it, yeah, the whole situation is appalling. Um, the judgment of the office, the arresting officer, was totally misplaced. Um, to have the type of mind to look at the situation like, oh yeah, we're taking this kid downtown at the age of mm-hmm. six. Um, I'm glad they decided to terminate his um, employment, as far as that's concerned. Um, the dude that put the zip ties on the little girl and put her in the squad car, he did wind up making calls to the precinct trying to find out, was it okay to do this arrest? Because he didn't feel it was right. Um, But he still couldn't go against his 
uh, ranking officer at the time, um, the school administration, from what I remember, they were concerned for the little girl's well-being as the officer almost bragged that that's not the only one that he arrested that day. Right. And, um, and that she had broken the record, like she was officially his youngest arrest. Right. Uh, that That's crazy to me. I, I dove a little bit deeper into his background as far as arrests that he's made. And with adults, it, it's a wholly whole different story. And the mindset that he has with this child is seen with the adults. It's just worse because there's no empathy. There's no, uh, well, you could see it with the little girl. There was no empathy there. No. There was no empathy there, and there was no 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 tactful uh, discretion. Uh, I, this this whole situation really made me um, <laughs> very upset. Uh, I had no words <laughs> about mm-hmm. the situation for a couple of days. Um, I really had to look into the situation a little bit more. I was like, this kid, if if the officer shown um, these signs of him be, which eventually got him terminated. What I'm saying is there had to be a pattern. This is not his first rodeo. Right. Uh, and then we learned about the second child earlier that day. And I looked into his past and seen his other arrests. And I was just like, wow, they let it go too far. Um, right. What's sad is that he is a member of the armed forces. Really he was a, he was a, a Marine. I don't, I don't even think you would want to consider him a part of the Marines after that. Um, because even being a Marine, I would think that you still had discretion um, due to your training. Uh, <laughs> that's all I got for now. <laughs> the, 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 the thing that bothered me the most was that she was under control. She wasn't flipping desks. She wasn't fighting with anybody. And she was like, where are we going? Oh, you got to go with him. I don't want to go with him. And she was just pleading with the officer, no, please don't put that on me. Don't put that on me. And then as they walked into the car, she was begging the officer, please give me a second chance. Mm-hmm. Crying. That shit, that shit hit me to the core. Right. That, See, that, that hit me to the core, too. I never, I never really. You know, my, I, I, Go ahead. Yeah, the, 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 aside, aside from the, uh, the, the conduct of the police department in this situation, what about school administration? Right. You know, uh, how do you, as a teacher, as a guidance counselor, as a, as, as, a, as a principal, as an assistant principal, as a, as a, as a staff member, how do you, how do you? How do you call the police on this six-year-old? Like, and, and then watch this six-year-old crying, begging, and pleading, getting dragged off in handcuffs. Like, it 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 it, it, bother, it bothers me for the safety. It makes me concerned for the safety of the children in that entire school. Right. It was. It was. Uh, to me, it was more of a. Um, I'm gonna just say it. Put it out there. It's, it's more of a racial thing for me. So watch black educator let a black child get arrested by a black officer <laughs> there was too many things going on in that situation for you not to be disturbed by it there was too many really things going on. um the the educators upset me because they could have handled that situation in house um if there was a need for outside intervention it should have been the parent find out what's going on find out what's going on with the child and see how we can best determine what to do with this child um that was not done and that's uh, that's disturbing in itself um i could and that's my biggest question in this whole situation is at what point were the parents notified like I, I mean, I'm I'm coming from a standpoint where I do not have children myself. But I would think that if I had a child in school, 
I would want to know that that child is about to be arrested. I don't need to find out at three o'clock. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to find out at five o'clock when I'm wondering, you know, where the hell is my child? I'm calling 911 and they're like, oh, your child is over at Central Booking. Right. Right. That's, that wouldn't even make sense to me as a parent, though. What do you mean? It's the first question that's coming out of your mouth. What do you mean? What, what crime did my child commit in order to be arrested? Thank you. Exactly. Right. But let me ask you guys a question. How this whole situation set off is that, according to the article that I read, was that well, the teacher that, got, that was kicked was one who grabbed him by the wrist before the kick happened. Now... Let me tell you something. If someone were to, if I was a child at that age, someone grabbed me by the wrist, I didn't know they were grabbing me. Instinct would say I would probably kick or throw a punch, if anything. It could be something that as if it was just a reaction. It wasn't something that was um, forthcoming. It wasn't something that was deliberate. It was just, just a reaction. Mm-hmm. But where was the, edu- first of all, in elementary school, where was the social worker during this process? Right. Where was the teacher? in the process? Where was the principal? Was the assistant principal? Where was all those people when this whole situation was going down to try to create a solution without the police? Right. We, we, all, we all went to Union School District. Me and Joe went to Walnut Street. Mm-hmm. You yourself, Ricky, you went to Smith Street. That wouldn't have yeah. been handled like that. That would not, would not have been handled like that if it was in our schools. No. Look, let me let me tell you something about Smith Street. We had this one teacher named Mrs. Haynes. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you right now, if Miss Haynes would have grabbed me and I would have kicked her, <laughs> I'd have came home with welts on me. Now I do understand it's twenty twenty. It, it situations are, 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 are a lot different, but um, you know, Miss Haynes would have put me in my place. And sat, probably sat me down at the back of the classroom, if not outside of the classroom, in a chair out in the hallway, if I was being that damn disruptive in, 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 in her classroom. Right. Like she would, she would have demanded her respect as opposed to trying to pass me off to the next faculty member. Right. Like it, it, and, and, and then on top of that, I, I definitely would have gotten a call home. Right. Oh yeah. You know, my, my mother would have gotten a call at work. You know, hey, come 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 get your child because he's wilding out. Right. It, it it wouldn't have it wouldn't have it, that, that that that's not to say it wouldn't have escalated to a point where the police would have been involved, but they would have done everything that they could have in their power to make sure that this situation got resolved in house. Now, what is Smith Street School like today? I have no idea. I I, I couldn't tell you. I could just hope that it's not in the condition that this school down south is. Right. Yeah. And, and being being a uh, yes, I did go to Union the Uniondale School District, but I also came from the Bronx. And in even in the Bronx, I remember the teachers being they're gonna handle that right then and there. And if they couldn't handle the student, they sent the principal's office where the the child was sat down till they got a hold of the parent to find out what they were going to do next. Right. Or kept them out of class until the end of the day where the parent would either pick them up or they sent them home. The parents would already know what's going on in the school. Right. Or have them come up to the school the next day. Something like that. But to have this happen where an officer gets involved and the child gets arrested, nah. (laughs) It does not sit with me. Not at all. I believe it was just a, a, a situation that went overboard for no reason. Yeah. And I think if, if it was any other child of a different race, it would not, would not have gone down like that. I don't know, because when I, when, I when I was trying to research the project, um, apparently up in Jacksonville, there was a little white girl, six years old, that got arrested as well. Really? I think there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's a problem that's broken in the system. And don't get me wrong, I'm not minimizing this situation. There was definitely... Uh, and obviously a racial overtone in the system, particularly when you when, uh, are in that situation, particularly when you look at the fact that it wasn't just a black child, but it was a black staff member and a black arresting officer. So I'm not trying to minimize the fact that there, that there was that there was racial overtones in the situation. But the fact of the matter is we got a broken system 
if 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 kids are if six year old kids are getting arrested, period. True. You know, the fact that we have that we have that in place says that there's something wrong with our system. True. Uh, the only thing I was gonna say was I think uh, with the situation with the the white girl in um, Florida, if I'm not mistaken, she had autism. Uh, I don't. I don't believe the the police officers have a protocol for dealing with somebody who is mentally ill. They're supposed to. They're supposed now, whether to. they do or not is another question, but they they are supposed to. They're supposed to, and it comes out after the fact that we we do have sensitivity training and things of that nature. But what is your protocol on that? Like, how do you how do you analyze the situation? Because these are not symptoms that are easily or uh, diagnosed, or it's it's something that I I'll pick up on, but on the contrary, if I was a person on the outside looking at the situation, you could tell something's off about the situation. Mm-hmm. What do you do in the situation where you try you you have to try to de escalate the um situation to try to talk the person down and get at, get the situation calm at least enough so that you can um, find out what the problem is. If it is a mental issue, then we can we can find a way to get the person the help that they need, the child that the help that they need, or whatever the situation. There has to be some type of uh, plan for that. Yeah. I, uh, I know we were talking about uh, rules of engagement, but this is another engagement question. We have to add that to the list. But the, the thing well, now, is, our, our, our children don't need to be. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm all for if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I'm all for educating our children. I'm all for telling our children how to deal with cops. I'm all for telling our children how to fire a gun and and, and about gun safety. I'm 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 with that. But at the same time, we need to deal with both the officers or or rather the police department and the school system about their rules of engagement when it comes to engaging our children. Right. What is allowed and what is not allowed. I mean, being that general, generationally, everything has changed. It's right. not the same as yeah. we were, when we were growing up where it's more close-knit and we understood as a parent. I'm going to speaking from a parent's point of view. As a parent, we understood if my child was out, acting out of line and I know you you were there to handle it, then it's all good. You do what you had to do when he goes when he comes home, he's getting handled again and <laughs> that'll be the end of that. You shouldn't have any more disruptions. <laughs> I definitely agree with you. Let me let me explain some when I was in Wall Street school, if I ever laid hands on a teacher, the teachers know to call Papa K J D. They know to call <laughs> Ms. Mrs. Duthel to come down and settle it, handle right. the situation. Right. You know, damn, I would be shaking in my boots in the principal office knowing that Papa KGD was coming <laughs> for me. Because you know what's going to happen. He wasn't going to wait till I get home. He's going to do it right in the principal's office. Right. So, there's therefore, no there's, there's no way for there's no need for police. <laughs> there's no need for anything else. Let's call Papa KJD, and he was coming. They call him the big red Haitian. He was coming. Mm-hmm. You know? So that, that's the issue that, you know, I understand it's different times. But this is this is why, this is one of the reasons why is the kids these days are acting like a fool. They, they become part of the system quicker. True. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I grew with people with a good spanking, always kept a, a child in check. A good spanking. Not, 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 let's not go overboard with the with the switches and the the four by fours and the extension cords or the it cooking turned spoons. Turned it into a WWE match. Hard. No, no. You know, you know, you, you, you. you know what though? You know what though? You know what though? That kept a lot of these kids off the street and kept a lot of these kids in line. And I, 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 I ain't advocating for abuse because there's a fine line between discipline and abuse. But uh, a lot of these kids, especially these kids that have been misdiagnosed with ADD and ADHD, a lot of these kids, all they need is just one good ass whipping. You get that one good ass whipping, 
And that's not to say they're not gonna ever need an ass whooping after that. But you, when you, you know, you already know when you get that one good ass whooping. Every ass whooping that comes after that reminds you of that previous ass whooping. Absolutely. I think we lost Joey G on the on the uh, on the uh, broadcast. Well, me and you will we'll chop it up between me, me and you, Ricky, and we'll wait till he comes back on to the uh, broadcast. But so, yeah, I totally agree with you. But m- the thing that 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 worries me about the school system is the reliance on law enforcement to to provide some sort of discipline for the child. I wish I had an educator on on this broadcast with us to explain how they would handle the situation if they were presented with that situation. Because I tell you, I tell you one thing. I, I've heard stories about you know students who who were com- who was on the news committed murder, was allowed back in the school to beat up another guy and his girlfriend. Right. But police was never called for that. Remember his similar to that, yeah. Police was never called for that. But yet you call it this little girl this little girl swings or or kicks a teacher and she just walked out and cuffed. Yeah. Not cuffs, zip ties. Have you ever been in a situation where the, the teachers know exactly who's dealing drugs? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you some teachers was never that dumb. <laughs> I find teachers yeah, be you, know most... you, you, you know what though? It, it, when, when, when I think back to uh, to uh, Union Dale High School, the kids. I'm not saying that there there that there, there, there wasn't drugs in the school, but the only the only drug I knew about was pot. Right. I mean, it, it really wasn't that serious. You knew who was smoking pot because every time they came in the classroom, they stank up the whole goddamn classroom. <laughs> you know, you ain't lying about, <laughs> lie about that. And it's and you're not gonna tell me that that shit affects your memory because these kids were smart. Mm-hmm. These kids were smart. Sometimes too smart for their own good. Particularly the five percenters. I mean, you get you give them the wrong test, they're gonna give you the answers that you don't want to hear, and that's the only reason why they got a forty on that test. That's like, right. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they know what the, they know what the right answer is supposed to be, but they're gonna tell you like a TI is as opposed to what you want to hear. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that they were failing the test because you know they smoked so much weed that you know now their mind is gone. No. Mm-hmm. You ask them what's the capital of Czechoslovakia, and they'll, they'll tell you why water is wet. That's why the answer was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it wasn't because um, it wasn't because something was rotting their brain out. Right. And uh, again, I'm not saying that there wasn't no that like I'm not saying that there wasn't no hardcore drugs or you know or real drugs because to me, hot ain't even a drug. There wasn't no real drugs. Over at over, you know over at the high school, but you know the teachers knew. Mm-hmm. We were the ones that had to figure out. Oh, that's why you always smell like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know, we we were the ones that had to figure out. Oh, okay, we see so and so rolling up behind the bleachers. You know, on the back track field. That's why they smell like that. You know what I mean? Right. I'm trying real hard not to say no names. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, guys, let me let me let me cue up this um, the video of the incident. Give me one second, guys. All right. All right. I'm gonna cue it up for everybody to see who's watching. Y'all need to comment. Yeah, comment. This is this is interactive. That's what we're doing. This prog- this uh, podcast live on broadcast. Interact. What's going on here? Oh, Wait, who's commenting? Where are they commenting at? She made, she made a comment right on. All right, here we go. Boom, we in the screen. <laughs> the desert go. Okay, she's going to have to come with us now. Okay, Kai. You Stand have up. to go with them, baby girl. Stand up. Okay, come over here. I know, it's for you. Your hands, okay? Uh-huh. Come over here, honey. <laughs> it's not gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt. No, okay, no I want it to start. No, don't put your hands on. Oh, oh, me. 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 Oh,
Francisco. Your grandma will come pick you up, okay? Oh, oh, I was scared. Oh, I did. Come on, let's go. Okay, you tell me what happened in the car, okay? See, that footage is brought to you by um, CBS News. You know, it, it, it's just funny how it took... This happened in September of 2019. It took about three... It took about three months. Three months to, 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 for us to know about this. Only because the grandmother decided to, to file a um, civil suit against the department as well as... I believe she also filed a uh, civil suit against the school also. I believe so. I think that'd be smart to do that as well, because that because the school, the school that the the school that her grandchild Kaya was in initiated this whole issue. Yes, they instigated the whole situation, and um, if if I was talking as the lawyer in the situation, I probably want for damages, um, mental. Due to our mental state, I mean, there's, <laughs> our mental state is not going to be. It wasn't right before. We knew we ha- she had a problem before, right. and it's not going to be right due to the situation after. Now there's a trust situation that's not going to be there. Um, what I got from that video is I just picked it up. Is she said she wasn't there. She wasn't there that long. Like she just got to school. Right. right. I didn't pick that up the first time. I guess I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, I was emotionally involved the first time I, I watched the video, but I, that that um that escaped me. But hearing it from her mouth, I just got here. Mm-hmm. So Joey G, how did how did that make you feel as a parent to see that happen? I could go in with reason. Um, mm-hmm. I can't. I, the whole situation upset me, and I I couldn't stand by and watch that as a parent. As even that as as an administrator, I couldn't sit by and watch that happen. I don't care. Um, as a teacher or uh, a vice principal, principal, whatever this, as a staff member, I couldn't watch that situation go down. They could stay with me until their parent gets here. That's how that's going down. Thank you. You want to, you want to fire you. me. You, you want to fire me. You can fire me. You want to arrest me. You can arrest me. But yes, I'm I am. In a situation like that, I'm gonna lose my job and my freedom. I'm not gonna sit back and watch somebody six and not not watch some six year old crying, no. begging, and pleading. No, you don't. I don't. I don't understand Call where the empathy grandmother up, put that kid on permanent timeout until the grandmother gets there, and if the grandmother don't whip their ass, right. I mean. I mean, it's okay, it's 2020. They're not, gonna, they're not supposed to do that in front of you because you got your own little administrative protocols that you that, that you got to follow. But still, if there's no type of punishment or whatever involved, if it seems like the home is not doing anything, maybe then you can reach out to somebody. But before you reach out to somebody outside of the school system, there's got to be some type of protocol in place where you can reach out to somebody within the school system, like the social workers, the guidance counselors. Like, there's got to be something there. In place. This is why I say that the, 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 it's, the, it's, the, the, it's not just the police system; it's the school system that's broken as well. Right. Absolutely, I, I agree with. I that. Think why well, is that I part think... of your protocol 
Why is that part of your protocol that we're gonna we're gonna call the police because this child is acting out? Right. Right. Six year old. A six year old. Six year old or sixteen year old. We're that, still talking about great here. We're talking about a six year old. Oh yeah, we're not, talking not, about no, that's not, what I'm not, saying. Not, 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 sixteen. Not, Still talking about grade school. Right. Even if it was a sixteen year old, a sixteen year old doesn't need to be walked out and cuffed. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 if they put their hands on a teacher, like, hey, you know what? There, 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 there's got there's got to be a protocol. There, there's there's got to be some type of SOP, some type of standard operating platform that the schools would follow. You know, m- maybe that child gets detained, but not just arrested and booked and fingerprinted and mugshotted and like. Yeah. To me, that it's, it's, it's just disturbing. That, that, that whole situation is disturbing. I, I Thank you for that, because you, you actually cleared up where I was about to... But you said uh, not arrested and detained. That that right detained. there. Detained. Yeah, detained, not arrested. Right. Now, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Uh, both of you guys. I know Joey and Joe's a parent. Me and Ricky hope to be parents soon. Um... In this situation, would you remove that child from that school district and bring it, put it into a place into another school? Um, That's I, easier said than done. Right. It depends. Yeah, because down south, it's not easy to just sw- up and switch schools. Mm-hmm. And you have to worry about transportation, how you get in child there, and and things of that nature. But um, yeah, the the logical thing in that situation would be to take the child and put them into another school. But like I said, down South, it's a little bit harder to do that. And I don't know, up North, it seems like there's um, boroughs and uh, guidelines as far as how far away from one school you are to another and things of that nature. So I don't know how that will work out. True, true. Unless you're going to go Catholic. (laughs) <laughs> you're gonna go private i mean that's a whole different ball game uh, my, my, that is. The, char- the charter schools now they have charter schools more charter schools so mm-hmm. that's another option i mean i heard stories about charter schools they, they, ain't, they ain't better either <laughs> i mean char- charter schools ain't no different than the regular schools you got the good the bad and the ugly you know, the, the the main thing about charter schools is that they, they is that they, they they charter a particular um a, a particular uh subject stronger than stronger than the rest. You know, um is that particular charter school right for your child? You know, your 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 child is in the orchestra, but the charter school that you're sending them to is big on wrestling. Like are you sending them to the right charter school? You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I'm saying that because I was in orchestra and wrestling. So wow. Listen, me, 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 and Ricky Brown were in the same orchestra. <laughs> and, <so> was. <laughs> and me and Joe was on the same wrestling team, <laughs> and we were still orchestrating. <laughs> yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But um, any uh, anybody's um, look, watching the podcast live, hit us up with comments. Let let us know what you think. Please. You know. Be more. We, let's be interactive. I know it's late. I know it's eleven forty-four at night, New York time. Interact. I'd like to hear your comments. Please, please do. Mm-hmm. If not, it's still early. We got you on the next podcast. At least you know it's there. At, at least you guys know we 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 we're live now doing this prog podcast live instead of a, a, a pre-recorded podcast on your favorite platforms. All right, we got one. We got one. Hold on. All right, I'm, I'm going to read this comment out loud from um, from New York. We're not going to put no names on it, but it says, um, and if that child goes back to, to the school, what supports do they have on place to help the child deal with the trauma of being arrested? What training will be put in place for staff to be able to deal with students who may act out behaviorally so that an incident like this doesn't happen again? Thank you. That's a good question. That was a good question. Thank you. That's an awesome question. So, what do you guys think about that? I, I, mean, I, 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 did, I don't have an answer for that. 
No, it's. I wish it's, I did. It's, it's like a million really, ideas are popping into my head, but I'm not a part of. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in Baltimore. Like I'm halfway to Florida. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not a part of that school district. You know, but it, but n- now that they've created this situation, now they got to take more money that they could have been using on books and and uh, after school programs and whatnot. Now now they have to train their teachers and train their guidance counselors and train their administrators and 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 um, even if it's just one child out of the whole out of the whole system, you do have to take care of that one child. You, you know what I mean? Even if they decided, okay, we're going to get rid of the SROs and we're not going to do the school resource officer thing. Like, you still got a traumatized child that has to deal with this. And it's, to me, it's the school's responsibility because they're there to, to, to enrich the child's life. They're not just there to teach them the ABC. Sure. Right. You know, but, but you know, uh, it, 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 that's going to that's gonna take me into another podcast about how, how our children are being miseducated. Because uh, you know they're, they're 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 taught to read and write, but they're they're not taught they're, they're they're taught to be good employees. They're taught to have a reflex response to authority, as opposed to teaching them the actual American dream of of business ownership, how to how to repair relationships within their family and within their community, how to get how to how to talk to their to their parent or their uncle or their cousin who might be on drugs and probably try to get them some kind of help. You know that that's not that's not something that you see our school systems doing, but they're supposed to be educating ourselves, and that's another podcast, though. Absolutely, but my my thing my thing is though, my parents always told me when you went to school that your teacher replaces them as their parent in that building. Now, because what they yeah. did to this child, a you know, six year old child, you know, the six year old ch- children they don't trust anybody else but their parents. Now, because what that, that school administrators did to that child, that child has no trust in those administrators to protect her, to educate her, no. and look out for her. Right. And can you blame her? I mean, you can't. You can't blame her in this situation. There was nobody looking out for her best interest at that time. There was nobody that stepped up and was like, whoa, 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 what's going on? Right. Can we do this a different way? There was none of that. Uh, to the question that um, Danielle, uh, uh, yeah, to <laughs> she had asked, um, the only thing I could say is we will have to come up with some type of plan right. ahead of time to deal with these type of children and figure out a way to um, figure out a way to get these problems resolved. That's why it's important for us as communities to organize and start getting things together. Uh, first, it starts in your home. You got to get things right in your home. And if you can't, then you 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 know you, you reach out. You reach out to your to your to your parent. You reach out to your your sibling. You reach out to your neighbor. You reach out to somebody if you can't get things straight in your home. You know. But we have this um, it, it, it's taboo. I don't want you to know about the problems that's going on in my home. But you got a problem in your home and you can't handle it. But it's a, it's it's a, it's all a level of communication, and it has to be open across the board. If the administrations are, if the administration is aware of a problem, they have the obligation to find a resolution to the problem. Right. They have to make um, uh, they have to make preparations for these things to be changed. It's up to the administration to do these things. If the administration is not going to do these things, when it comes out and they're sued on the situation, is because you didn't pre, you didn't see why, you didn't cover your ass, and that's that's being real about the situation. So in a situation like this, when when you have the grandparents suing, civil has a civil suit against the police department, it's it's <laughs> it's there's cause there. And the uh, school district, or or the school itself, yeah, she has cause. I mean, the grandmother has cause to sue both, both both entities, the school and the police department. And she could go for the district. Basically, if she wanted, if she wanted to be that, if she wanted to be that consistent, she could go to all three, because it's the district, the school, and the police department. But my my thing is, guys, I'm really going to go back is during that situation. 
I know when we, like I said, we went over to elementary school. Our elementary schools always had a school psychologist available and a social worker available. Right. At no instance do we ever see that at all in that footage. Uh, I don't. It's, well, we don't know who that administrator was in that footage. We don't know Absolutely. if that was the principal, right. that was the guidance counselor, right. if that was the teacher. We don't. That's a. It's assumed. And then, and then on top of that, um, I mean, from 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 what little bit of research that I did on 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 this topic, um, I was not able. Like it, it was very unclear as to what happened for it to escalate to that point. Right. Like they, they they talk about the, the child being violent, the the the, 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 the child um, kicking and, and punching an, an administrator. They didn't even say who that administrator was. Was it this child's teacher? Was it the lunch aide? Was it you know what I'm saying? Like like who was it that this child went after? And how did that situation occur? You know, was it a was it a situation where the child was running around the class and the, and the teacher said sit your ass down and then she could you know what I'm saying? Or did the right. kid just come out of nowhere? And just start uh, uh, attacking this adult. You know, I don't think they want us to have the complete context of it. Right. You know, um, if the child was wrong, the child was wrong. Still doesn't necessarily mean the child needs to be arrested. But if the child is wrong, the child is wrong. And that behavior needs to be corrected. Correct. All great points, guys. That's, that's why I love having you guys on the show. You're all great points. Oh, thanks for our guest host too. We can't we can't leave them out. Absolutely. <laughs> thanks, 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 thanks for the thanks for um for the educator that gave us her, her comment on the situation as well. It was it was it was very very good questions, great questions, and um, we're gonna we're gonna end the podcast so from here, guys. Um, next episode, I hope I hope we have more viewers. Uh, we will have more viewers. I know it. Our podcast is the shit, but we're gonna talk about um, stop and frisk. In regards to our um, presidential candidate, Michael Bloomberg, and how this affects his um, candidacy for president. We're going we're gonna to talk about that because a lot of things, a lot of people are offended by Stop and Frisk. I remember, I forgot the guy's name who committed suicide because he was so traumatized from Stop and Frisk. We're going to talk about that on the next podcast. But keep in mind... <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but you had the same facial expression that I did, and I was just like, "Oh damn!" <laughs> I, shit, I, I ain't know about that. We're gonna have to look that shit up. We definitely gonna rap on the next yes, podcast. Yes, uh, it was. A, it was. A, it was I'm tripping that there's a name for it now. Like when I was living down in Michigan Village, there wasn't a name for it. It was just a. It was just Tuesday, like. Right. <laughs> but the, the 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 podcast we're gonna speak about the features. Very small features of Stop and Frisk and the the cons of Stop and Frisk on the next podcast. Um, I don't want to divulge too much of the next episode. It will be this Tuesday evening. Um, I will announce the time, the day of the podcast, and hope everybody's there to watch it. Um, any comments and complaints, any feedback, you can definitely hit, hit me up. Uh, True Players Podcast at gmail.com, which is T R U P L A Y A Z. At G, um, I mean, podcast at gmail.com. You can listen to this podcast on this page, the True Place podcast page. Add yourself to the page. You know what I'm saying? Also, you can listen to it on Anchor, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio. And hopefully, soon we'll be on also on Pandora as well. Um, any last words for you, from you guys? All I'm going to say is if you have any questions or comments and you want to vent about the situation, you know where to hit me up. Hit me up on Joey G. <laughs> vent with Joey G, the podcast, and I got you. Yes, the podcast. you on my show and you can vent about what you just heard and what mm-hmm. you want to talk about on my show. I got you there. If not, you just want to be, remain anonymous and go behind the scenes and talk your little talk, you can do that. He already gave you the inform- information. We'll go from there. <laughs> gotcha. Ricky, what's up, my man? What you what you dropping down? What you dropping on this? Stay ready. You only got to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> like Joe G said, it's his his new podcast coming soon. Venting with Joey G. If you want to be a guest host on my show, you know what to do. Email me. Message message me on my on my true place podcast page. 
Yeah. And um, we're going to sign off on this podcast. I'll see you on Tuesday. Peace. Shout out to my nigga Dom. True players. Let's go. This that true player shit. We going to make it live with Big Dom. How they going to knock true player shit. We going to take it farther than beyond. This that true player shit. We going to make it live with Big Dom. How they going to knock true player shit. We gonna